Today, the pretrial for Army analyst Bradley Manning opened at Fort Meade, Maryland, under tight security and limited media access. Manning, who turns 24 tomorrow, has been kept away from the public since his detention in May 2010. He's accused of leaking hundreds of thousands of government documents to WikiLeaks. The documents and videos shed light on a wide range of subjects, including civilian deaths in wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, torture of detainees, and the U.S. role in the Middle East. Manning's charges could bring the death penalty, but military prosecutors say they will seek life in prison without the possibility of parole if convicted. For more, we're joined by Elizabeth Goitine. She's the co-director of the Liberty and National Security Program at NYU's Brennan Center for Justice and has written extensively about secrecy, security, and the Bradley Manning case. Welcome to FSRN. Thanks very much. Let's begin with the pretrial itself. There's been high security, limited media access. Manning's defense lawyer says most of the witnesses he attempted to call were rejected. What stands out to you about this hearing as it is getting underway? Well, I think the most notable thing is that we are seeing this high security. um, Much of the proceedings, or at least some of the proceedings, are quite likely to be closed to the public. And the ostensible reason is because classified information is being discussed. And, of course, in this situation, there's something really ridiculous about that because the classified information in question is available to anyone with a computer. I mean, this is information that has been made public, not just in in some form or other, but the exact documents. So to shut the public out of these proceedings for that reason, um, to me, there's, there's just no justification for that. Well, let's get into that material itself. When the documents began to be made public, there were grave warnings and alerts from government officials about dangers to releasing these to the public. What is actually known about how many of these documents really threaten national security? Right. So the government has actually performed an internal assessment of the likely damage from the disclosures. Um, And that assessment has found that there may be pockets of short-term damage Uh, but little reason to fear any long-term damage. Um, And, of course, in public, we've seen the administration performing a sort of awkward two-step where they, you know, are are really condemning this disclosure because of the possibility that lives could be lost and the national security could be badly compromised, and yet they're hastening to reassure uh, Congress and the public that really no harm has been done uh, because, of course, If there had been harm from this or if we had to fear some harm for this, the administration would carry part of the blame. And stepping back for a moment, why is it important that these documents that uh, perhaps should not have been classified as secret documents, why is it important that they get into the public domain, that the public has access to them? Because a lot of these documents contain information that's important um, for the public, for Congress, for making uh, decisions about policy. And in a democracy, um, the people, uh, and through their elected representatives, are charged with making these decisions. And unless they have full information about what the government is doing, it's really impossible for them to do that. Some of the information from the WikiLeaks documents were things like unreported civilian casualties in Afghanistan and Iraq, our knowledge of torture um, by Iraqi officials, Um, You know, things like the fact that our government was pressuring Germany to interfere uh, with lawsuits in Germany to hold the U.S. accountable for torture. This is the kind of information that the public has uh, the need and a right to know in order to make its own decisions at the voting, you know, at the ballot box um, when they contact their representatives to say what they want to see happen. Uh, They need this kind of information. In your research and writing, you have brought up questions of overclassification in the U.S. system of secrecy and national security, how making material secret and keeping it away from the public and, and other government decision makers actually undermines security in the U.S. How extensive is this? It's really quite massive. And, you know, for decades, um, government officials across the political spectrum have acknowledged that we have just rampant overclassification. Um, And the estimates by the experts and by the insiders in the government um, range anywhere from 50 percent to 90 percent. So that's 50 to 90 percent of classified documents could safely be released. Um, And just to put a number on what that would look like, 
the number of classification decisions um, that were made in fiscal year 2010 um, were 77 million. There were 77 million decisions to classify information. So if you assume that, conservatively assume, that half of those decisions were erroneous or improper, that's tens of millions of classification decisions, decisions to classify information that really belongs to the public. Army analyst Bradley Manning's pretrial open today at Fort Meade, Maryland. It's set to continue through the weekend. Elizabeth Goitin is the co-director for the Liberty and National Security Program at NYU's Brennan Center for Justice. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.